Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to ask you all, what do you actually want from Intel for a discrete GPU? The release of their offerings is getting closer and closer, and I actually put out a very similar video to this a couple of years ago. Intel actually spotted that video, and it actually went down quite well inside the company. And the reason they spotted it is because you all were tweeting at them, telling Intel Graphics, hey, you should check this out. So yeah, in the spirit of that, since now we have a much better understanding of what Intel will be doing, let's open some type of dialogue. Now, obviously the most important thing is product availability. So that of course is number one. Ultimately, we don't want the product to be a paper launch. So I'm just gonna get that right out of the way. However, outside of that, let's quickly go over things we know about. Well, I say no, obviously. Some of this information I'm about to say is rumor, but we have a fairly good understanding of at least some aspects of their offerings. So yeah, going forward, what we believe is that the you know product has up to 512 execution units, which should put it about mid-range in terms of performance, maybe a little bit faster. I'm hearing that it should compete with the equivalent of an RTX 3070, maybe a little bit faster, maybe a little bit slower. So I'm gonna be, for out this video, assuming it's around RTX 3070 or equivalent performance. And uh, yeah, this seems to be from a single tile. However, I do think that going forward, Intel will increase the number of tiles, or if you prefer, chiplets in their higher end offerings. And I do think that they will also release products in the Halo arena, you know, the equivalents of like the RX 6900 XT or whatever. In the shorter term though, I think Intel just wants to get its foot in the door and release a product which is appealing to a ton of people. We've seen Roger Kodori take a very similar approach to this with Polaris when he was working at AMD. The RX 480, four gigabyte and eight gigabytes were around 200 to 240 US dollars, depending of course on the variant, although you could buy like heavily overclocked Red Devil cards, which would obviously cost you more cash. And I'm hearing that these offerings from Intel could possibly be around the 300 US dollar mark, although of course it's very difficult to accurately predict pricing at the moment, and frankly my info could be off, and maybe the cards will be another 100 on top of that. Either way, outside of product availability, the other big thing that we do know is that Intel seem to be very, very, very keen to push these into the hands of gamers, but also a ton of other usage scenarios too, such as servers. And we can assume, therefore, that we will see variants of this for the prosumer space. I wonder how Intel are going to segment this, whether we're going to see similar segmentation to uh, how NVIDIA have done their GeForce and more professional cards, or whether it's going to be just a single card, and how also, let's say, FP performance will be, you know, reduced across different markets or whether Intel is just going to let it rock. I'll also be curious to see what the performance of these cards will be in something like let's say Blender or perhaps a more compute focused scenario. That's not really much information, it's just me kind of spitballing at you all. Okay, so what do we actually want out of the GPU? Well, for the most obvious other than availability, it's got to be drivers. There's no point having a card which is great, but then it just crashes every five seconds. RDNA 1, especially and RDNA 2 to a slightly lesser extent, had slightly ropey drivers initially. Um, there was a lot of black screen issues, of course, with RDNA 1, and while I personally couldn't replicate them, I can't really argue that they did seem to be a problem. So naturally, we don't want that from Intel on either Linux or Windows. And I will also be very curious to see what feature set in terms of what's available for gamers and what tweaks and just overall, you know, just I, I guess you could see the ease of use of their control panels, for example. Intel have been working quite a lot on this with, for example, the Graphics Command Center. And this does also incorporate features such as uh, their variant of NVIDIA Shadow Play. Currently, Shadow Play does seem to be a bit more robust, more features, but at the end of the day, you have to remember that, well, it's only integrated GPUs at the moment that we have uh, these, uh, this software available for, so perhaps it will be better and more feature-packed by the time we see a full release. It'll be interesting to see how Intel does push this to gamers, especially given, of course, again, it does seem to be a mid-range solution. Similar to that, another question I have is, what the heck are we going to see in terms of 
well, AIB models? And will there be AIB models? Personally, I'm hoping the answer is yes, but with a couple of caveats. The first caveat is that I hope that Intel have a tighter rein on AIBs in terms of the lower um, price brackets. So by which I mean that we don't see uh, certain AIBs, whom I won't name, hint, hint, you can probably guess, just kind of skate by by the bare minimums and you're kind of half expecting the thing to burst into flames because of a flimsy VRM solution or whatever else. I also do want Intel, and this is the second thing, to create uh, reference designs and for them to sell them. I know that this is not sometimes uh, exactly favoured by AIBs for obvious reasons, but I think a decent reference design, i.e. one that doesn't sound like a lawnmower, is never a bad thing. And of course, this reference design is kind of just, it's nice to have. At the end of the day, it's something that AIBs can improve on. And of course, they can also do things like make sure that they get the cherry picking, the you know, the best quality silicon for the ultra extreme overclocked variants or whatever else. I do think also Intel, this is slightly off topic, but I do think Intel will be supporting things like variable rate shading, which they already kind of do anyway, mesh shaders, hardware-based ray tracing. And given we've seen these feature sets leaked now in multiple ways, and Intel have essentially confirmed it at this point, mesh shaders aren't a big deal right now. But going forward over the next couple of years, I suspect that they probably will be very important in terms of performance, especially as we start to see engines like Unreal Engine 5 become the normal. Sure, you can probably run this on a card without those, but I imagine performance is probably not going to be as good. And yes, smaller indie games are not going to rely on features like hardware-based ray tracing, for example, but again, why would you want to pick up a card that doesn't have these features, especially in six, 12 months time? And yeah, that to me is another thing as well. I do want these cards to have decent levels of uh, ray tracing performance because why not? Um, as for power consumption and heat, which are another thing, initially I was hearing that there was a lot of problems with the power consumption and the temperature of, the, of these cards. Basically, it was just running away. However, it does seem to be getting a little better. I've read now a couple of places that we could be seeing 150-ish watts TDP, for um, the mobile variants, which might be a little higher, of course, for the uh, desktop cards. Um, I honestly can't remember from the top of my head where I read that, so I'll try to link it in the video description. Uh, but I did read that yesterday. <laughs> I can't actually remember where I read it, which kind of sucks. But I do remember it's 150 watts for the mobile part, which just seemed to leak. And that is actually not too shabby. Um, 150 watts, you know, Obviously, the mobile parts, assuming it is still 512 execution units, which it does seem to be, we can imagine that they are doing things like lowering the clock frequency for obvious reasons, but this also does put us in pretty good stead for the desktop variants. Assuming that those figures are correct, this probably means that we don't need a nuclear reactor to power XE, which is, again, obviously a good thing and should mean that it will find its way into your case and be possibly a really good candidate for like a small form factor build as well. Again, I'm not saying it necessarily will beat AMD or Nvidia's equivalents in terms of power efficiency, but that's not really the point. I just think that Intel do need, you know, to be able to compete in a variety of different metrics. I also wonder, what do you guys think about performance optimizations? You know, the kind of one-click optimizes your game. Obviously, AMD, NVIDIA both have this, where you can essentially not know too much about, let's say, what, uh, I don't know, subsurface scattering does, or what, you know, the different levels of texture filtering might do, or uh, what HBAO does, or whatever. You don't need to worry about any of that. You can just let the GPU kind of, um, or rather the drivers select this for you in the game. And I think that it's good for folks who don't necessarily have a huge understanding of PC technology. Um, so I wouldn't mind necessarily Intel having that and have some type of performance optimization tools for those who don't exactly have such a good understanding of the tech. So this video is already getting kind of long and I don't really want to harp on, you know, my ideas too much longer because I've spoken about these several times in the past in multiple videos. Instead, I want this to kickstart a discussion. So please comment down below what you would like from Intel. Again, 
Availability is important, of course, but what other types of features, what other types of things would you want in the cards? And how would Intel need to market, price, and just overall offer a product which would enable you to think, hmm, well, I'm seeing an Intel, um, you know, let's call it DG2 or HPG, and right next to that is a Radeon card, and right next to that is an NVIDIA card. What would it require for you to pick up Intel over AMD or NVIDIA? What type of features, what type of um, card would, would you actually want in your hand? Would it have to be notably cheaper? Would it have to just have reliable performance? Or would it just be if you can buy the card and you couldn't, for example, a GeForce? I think that Intel getting into the market is extremely interesting. And I don't know why, but there is this really kind of weird, surreal part of my brain. And I know this makes absolutely no sense, but it just, it really makes me giddy and just like, just kind of be in this bizarre land that potentially in, you know, let's say a year's time, I could be running a rig which has an Intel GPU and an AMD CPU. And that again, makes me really laugh. And I'll tell you what would also be quite interesting as an experiment to, let's say you're targeting a system of, mm, I'm just gonna throw out a number of like 1300, 1400 bucks, right? What would be really fun for me to, is to create a CPU and GPU combination of Intel and AMD of both ways, so an Intel CPU and an AMD GPU, and then vice versa, at the same price bracket, and see how the two systems compete against one another. I think it would be really interesting. And of course, that would have to be tested across a variety of different workloads, gaming, you know, content creation, whatever. But I think it would be very interesting to see how all of those kind of things stack together. And yeah, uh, the geeky part of me who's been involved in computers for way too long, I think that there's something so just so strange about the prospect of having an AMD uh, an AMD CPU with an, an Intel GPU, and I just I, I again it just kind of it just it it, it really gets me. <laughs> it just it just really appeals to me for some reason. It just it just makes me chuckle. Um, but yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily at the start anyway. Intel are going to have a product for the bleeding edge gamers, so. If you do want the highest performance tier product, probably Intel, at least initially, are not going to have a product for you. Hopefully I'm wrong on that. I would love to be wrong on that. I would love for them to have a card which is bleeding edge, capable of, you know, high, uh, high uh, frame rate 4K gaming. I just don't think that this is their plan initially, but I would love to be proven wrong. With that said, I think that's just about enough of my rambling for this video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do, of course, leave a like on the video. But more important than that, do comment down below. Let me know what you would like from an Intel product. And if you would also be so kind as to maybe, well, throw this at Intel, you know, like that was a terrible throwing animation, but the camera is so close. I didn't want to like, you know, knowing my luck, I'd probably just knock the camera off the bloody stand. So whatever. Anyway, I'll leave you all to it. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.